decided we better go and have a look at, at the event because it was sort of quite significant. We jumped in a chopper to go up and take a look and yeah we're, we're pretty surprised at the scale of the, of the event yesterday where um, a significant portion of the face of Mike Dixon had collapsed and poured down onto the Grand Plateau, um, stopping within a couple of hundred metres of Plateau Hut. This aspect of, of Dixon fell away and came down through here, uh, bounced off the bottom of the Syme Ridge on Tasman and then out across the Grand Plateau. And you can see just here in this corner, um, this is Plateau Hut and there were a number of people there at the time who actually witnessed this uh, witnessed this event. They were, um, I say, say very um, stimulated, overstimulated perhaps, freaked out as, as the term I'd say. Some of them were pretty gobsmacked. And as a result of this, um, I made the decision to, to close the hut and um, evacuate those who were uh, in the building at the time. There was still um, a lot of rock fall coming off the face, um, but the debris on the glacier had pretty much settled down and, and was stable but it extended maybe three k's and was at least 500 metres at its widest point. But where it had reached was at the end of the Hochstetter Icefall. So it essentially cut off the route from Plateau Hut into the lower Linda Glacier and onto Mount Cook. Yeah, our guide Murray was on the loo at the time, sitting there saying, oh, it's just another bloody avalanche, bloody rock fall. He said, until he opened the door of the hut and went, oh, and he was, still freaking out when we got there a couple of hours later. <laughs> they said it was an amazing experience to, to sit there and, and, and watch this um, you know, landscape altering event as it took place. Some of them described it like a, making a noise like a 747 flying over them. Um, so it was, came right down the hill to them. So it's just a massive relentless thing that expands and starts to fill up whatever space it can get into as it comes at you. So it, it seems to move in slow motion, but I mean, Really, it's picking up speed with gravity as it comes down the hill. So it would have been, it would have been moving um, 100 kilometres an hour, maybe, as it, at its fastest as it spread out and, and slowed down on the plateau. It would have been really scary to be in the hut at the time. I mean, the debris only stopped 200 metres from from the hut. People are speculating on what caused the, the collapse. And um, I mean, living here and, and working in the mountains, we, we, we see change is just continual. We see the glaciers are ablating. We see rock falls all the time. Um, nothing like the scale of what we saw in Mount Dixon. So it, it was massive, it, it, was, it was huge. And, and we haven't seen anything on that scale since the probably the collapse of, of Mount Cook in December 91. Right, so this afternoon we've got two GNS scientists coming to have a look at uh, Mount Dixon. They'll be looking at the eastern side of the divide as well as the western side to see what sort of structural changes may have taken place and what sort of ongoing issues there may be. As soon as we've got the, uh, hopefully the green light from them, we can then reopen uh, the hut, allow people back in, but obviously then they will have to make their own decisions about um, how comfortable they feel um, moving backwards and forwards through this area. Progressive erosion in the mountains. They get over steepened with glacial attrition, uh, and there, will be, there are defects, there are faults, uh, and a lot of joint sets uh, in this material. The bedding in the Greywacke dipped steeply, 
and I'm sure it's a combination uh, of these defects which has allowed uh, relaxation and uh, a large scale rockfall. Most of it would uh, be small scale, uh, it's probably happening all the time, but uh, on this occasion it's quite a major event. It's impressive, it's remarkably uh, well, spectacular in terms of a rockfall uh, come uh, sort, of, sort of debris flow in effect, um, perhaps 50% of it's snow and ice, the rest rockfall rubbish. Uh, it is well below the level of the Plateau Hut and uh, I don't think there's likely uh, to be any further rockfalls as the size that could get to this level. Uh, one would assume that it would actually go down over the edge uh, of the uh, ice fall down here, the Hutsteader ice fall, that's the low relief area and it would be directed further uh, flows would be allowed to be directed in that way rather than get to this level. They're making an assessment of the place. It, it looks likely that we'll be able to reopen the hut pretty much immediately but uh, people would be well advised to stay away from the immediate area under the rockfall for quite a long time. It's loose grit, loose dust, it's, it's still blowing around. It'll be weeks if not months of um, continuing dust coming out from the rockfall. There's been a lot of rock dislodged and uh, a lot of loose stuff blowing around, still just lying around the place. Uh, across the plateau, it's obviously going to take a bit longer to get across the plateau. It's uh, a lot of loose rock and a lot of ice. Uh, yeah, it'd be quite broken travel over that few hundred metres of the debris. see it's come come quite close to the hut um, the hut is actually located on a on a rise so I believe it's out of immediate danger but we need that confirmation from um, those with uh, expert knowledge